DSM 7.2 was recently released, and there are two main features that I think that most home users would actually benefit from and something that you can easily start to use and or configure, and those are the two things we're gonna take a look at in this video. Now, real quick, if you haven't gotten DSM 7.2 pushed to your NAS yet, it's probably gonna be a few weeks until you do. If you want to upgrade, you have to download the package and manually upgrade it. If you don't want to be on the bleeding edge of updates, you should probably just wait. Though DSM 7.2 does have some pretty awesome features, so we're going to jump right into it. And the first thing that we're going to take a look at is SMB multi-channel. Now, before we even look at the NAS setup for SMB multi-channel, and it's actually very easy on the NAS side, it's very important to understand how SMB multi-channel works and what exactly it does. So right off the bat, SMB multi-channel will allow you to use all of the network interfaces on your NAS for SMB transfers. So what that means is if you have two gigabit NICs on your Synology NAS, you will be able to use both of them for SMB transfers. So rather than maxing out at one gigabit network speeds, you will max out at two gigabit network speeds. Now there's a few things that are very important to understand with how this works. And the first is that your network infrastructure has to actually support it. So what I mean by that is if your Synology NAS has two NICs on it and you have a PC on the other side, it either has to have two network interfaces as well and be using SMB multi-channel, or it has to have a two and a half gigabit or better NIC. Equally important is that the switch in between the NAS and the PC must have a two and a half gigabit NIC as well. Now that assumes that the PC has a two and a half gigabit NIC and you won't be using uh, two ethernet cables on the PC side. So that's where this gets a little bit confusing because enabling SMB multi-channel on your NAS is awesome, but in order to actually utilize it and double, quadruple, whatever you're trying to do, the network speeds, you have to have the network infrastructure capable of doing that. So that's the biggest disclaimer. Now there are two other disclaimers as well. And the first is that you cannot use link aggregation. I have a video on how you can set up link aggregation and link aggregation is great. However, the way that SMB multi-channel is actually used, you have to have two separate IP addresses for each network interface. When you use link aggregation, you have to bond the network interfaces together and you'll only have one. Unfortunately, it will not work if you use link aggregation. The second thing that you have to know is that on the NAS side and or on the PC side, they have to be the same speed. So what I mean by that is if you're using one gigabit NICs, they both have to be one gigabit. Now that is extremely important and those are really the disclaimers on SMB multi-channel because the actual setup process on SMB multi-channel is in essence just enabling a checkbox. So on the NAS side, it's really easy. But the key here is to understand exactly how the network infrastructure between the NAS and the PC has to be in order for you to actually see the increase in speeds. Now, we'll quickly dive into the settings on the NAS side. And the first thing that I want to point out is what I pointed out earlier. If you're using link aggregation, you have to turn it off. So if you're using it, go into the network interface settings, delete the bond, and then you should have however many NICs your, your NAS has you should have that many uh, network interfaces labeled there. What you wanna ensure next is that each network interface will have its own IP address. As long as it has its own IP address, you will be able to utilize SMB multi-channel. So I have written instructions for this that I'll leave in the description of the video. But all you really have to do is go into File Services, select SMB, and then Advanced Settings. After that, you can select the Others tab and then enable SMB3 multi-channel. As soon as you click Save, you're gonna get a pop-up. I already saved it here, but you're gonna get a pop-up that enabling SMB multi-channel will enable asynchronous read as well. Just select Yes there and then you can proceed. And at that point, that's it. SMB multi-channel is completely set up. As long as you're using network infrastructure that can support the increased speeds, you will see faster network transfer speeds over SMB. Now it's only over SMB, but regardless, it is pretty incredible how easy it is to set up and how you can very easily double at minimum your network transfer speeds. So that's the first thing. SMB multi-channel 
should be configured if you have the network infrastructure that can actually sustain higher throughput speeds. If you don't, there's no reason to do this. Uh, maybe in the future, if you upgrade your switch or upgrade your PC, and you can do it at that point, just refer to the article that I left in the description and you'll be set up in a few minutes. Now that's the first thing. The second thing is the new Docker application, which is no longer Docker, it is now Container Manager. So I went into this in a previous video, but now that it's fully released, I've been able to really just dive into it a little deeper. And there's a few key things that I wanna point out that I'm hoping will help you guys out. Now I have a full guide for Container Manager in the description of the video. And I'd really suggest following that because it's a structured approach that kind of takes the entire application step by step and walks you through all of it. But in this, I wanna just mention a few key things that I've noticed and how I think Docker containers should be managed on Synology NAS devices from this point forward. So the first thing right off the bat is that you're gonna see that there's this project tab. Now this project tab, in my opinion, is what everybody should be using moving forward. This is where you can use Docker Compose. So Docker Compose was added to Container Manager, and to be clear, Container Manager is Docker. Um, they renamed the name of the application, but it is Docker. That's a little confusing, but after you get past that, the application is awesome. Now the Project tab is what you should be using, and the reason for that is because you can create configuration files for every single one of your Docker containers and those configuration files will be standard across the board. So if you, you know, set up a Proxmox server in the future and you say that you want to stop running Docker on your NAS and you want to run it on your Proxmox server, you can copy over those configuration files, modify some of the settings. Most of the time it's just going to be the volumes. But after you modify the volumes, you can bring up that container on that device very easily. If you compare that to the situation that we've had for many years at this point, at least through Synology's GUI, you would have to copy over all of the data and then reconfigure that container. With Docker Compose, the Docker Compose file will contain the entire configuration. Now there's two ways that you can do it. You can either create a Docker Compose file by just basically copying a Docker Compose format, or you can actually create the Docker Compose file on your NAS and then just refer to it from the project itself. Now, the important thing that I wanna really mention here is that in the volume section, you have to make sure that you use the volume on your NAS. So what I mean by that is most people will probably be using one volume. Um, there are exceptions there, but I'm just going from a general perspective here. Most people will be using one volume. So in your volume section, you have to refer to it the same way you would refer to it if you SSH'd into your NAS and you were trying to find a file. So that would be forward slash volume one, forward slash whatever folder you wanna use for the mount paths. Now, ironically, there is no container manager uh, default folder, but there is a Docker default folder because container manager is Docker. So you can really just keep the configuration files there and then you can modify the Docker Compose file to refer to the same locations on your NAS. And at that point, as soon as you create this, the Compose file will exist in that location along with all the important files for that specific container. And that entire folder will be the entire container and all the important files inside of it. What this also allows you to do is navigate to a Docker images documentation and copy the Docker Compose file into DSM and create the container that way. Up to this point, if you weren't comfortable with Docker, a lot of the times you had to seek out Synology specific tutorials on how to implement a specific container because it was too confusing to try to reference the documentation and put it into Synology's GUI. With this, you just copy the Docker Compose file, you modify some of the settings and you could have the container up and running in a few minutes. So that's a really great enhancement and something that I think in a year or two from now, we're going to look back on and say was a substantial change. Now that's the new portion of the container manager application. The rest of the settings for the most part are the same as they've always been in prior versions of Docker on Synology NAS devices. So the container tab is where you can go through and use Synology's GUI to create Docker containers. Now the GUI is different. So they changed it. In DSM-7, I don't remember exactly what update it was, but they changed the user interface of Docker. 
Now they changed it again. So it is different. It's not better or worse. It's different. The settings are just really in different locations. One thing I noticed that I don't know if I'm going crazy. I can't find it um, if it is anywhere else is that in prior versions of Docker, you were able to add multiple network interfaces to an individual container. So that was important for containers like Pi-hole because Pi-hole is a DNS server. There are some port conflicts there depending on what packages you're using in uh, DSM. And for that reason, I always found it easier to create a Mac VLAN network interface and a bridge network interface because the Mac VLAN network interface would allow all devices outside of the NAS to access it on its own IP address. And then the bridge interface would allow the NAS to access the container using that bridge network IP address. Now, for whatever reason, I cannot add multiple network interfaces to a container. So that's kind of interesting because I don't know if that's a feature or if that's a bug, but that's something you were able to do in the past that you can't. So right now, if you're trying to create a container and you want to use a Mac VLAN network interface, you're not gonna be able to set up a bridge interface, at least, at least not through Synology's GUI. So if you were able to figure out how to do it, even in a different way, even using say the command line interface, leave it in the comments so that we're all aware of how to do it. But right now that is one limitation slash bug that exists in Container Manager for DSM 7.2. Everything else is really just in different spots. So if you're going back and referencing a tutorial from the past and you don't wanna use Docker Compose, all the data is there. You just kinda of have to find out where it is and just kind of learn how to do it that way. I don't really know how else to say it. It's just the way it is. But as I said earlier, I think most people are gonna switch over to Docker Compose. So at least at this point in time, it's gonna be a short-term thing. So that's the main thing that I wanted to talk about with Container Manager on DSM 7.2. So like I said earlier, I have written instructions for SMB multi-channel and Container Manager that I'll leave in the description of the video. And there are other DSM 7.2 features that I will be looking at in future videos but these are the two things that I think will impact most users if you've been using your NAS for really anything other than a file server. So I'm hoping that this video helped you guys out. If there's anything in specific that you wanna see about DSM 7.2, please leave a comment and let me know what it is. I'd love to get some suggestions from you guys. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions that I could help out with, feel free to leave them in the comments of the video. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.